Hello everyone, welcome to Sid's Garage, and in this episode of Nerdy 30, we will be teaching you odometer repair for the motor meter instrument clusters, commonly found on later models from 1987 to 1992. If you look at the center of your cluster, you will be able to verify if it's motor meter or VDO, which is important because the installation and gear parts are different. Garagistic makes replacement gears and are easy to find on the links below. This job is perfect for a slow Sunday, doesn't require much skill, but you must be patient and be sure to take your time. You want to get it right without breaking any of the other parts of the cluster. The plastics and electronics are very fragile at this point in its lifespan. We are working in a much smaller world than usual, so you will need precision tools to accomplish this task. On the back side of the cluster, there are eight Phillips screws that clamp the unit together. Carefully unscrew them. We will open the bottom two tabs underneath securing the unit. When unlatched, we will carefully pull the cluster apart. You are separating the bottom contacts from each side, so be extra careful and delicate. Here we have the insides of the cluster. Then we will proceed to remove the four Phillips screws that secure the odometer gauge in the cluster. Once the odometer screws are removed, it pops right out and there you have it. Leftover debris will linger inside, so let's take a second look to clean up. After cleaning, let's flip the odometer to the side and remove the gear plate cover using a precision flathead screwdriver. Carefully pop off the cover. Here you can see the wear on the gears and why they stopped spinning. Once you have your replacement gears laid out, let's remove the gears with precision pliers. Slowly wiggle them off while securing the odometer. Once you've gotten all the gears off, there will be a lock ring stuck on the spindle shaft that needs to be cut with diagonal pliers. Be careful as your mission is to cut the ring, not the shaft itself. There you have it. Using a Q-tip, you can clock mileage, but this is very time consuming if you have thousands of miles to update. But if it's a few miles, this is the easiest method. Resetting the mileage requires more work and skill, which we don't cover in this video. Now back to the gears. This is the order they will be installed, so let's dive in. Let's install the smallest gear, which goes in first, inside the middle rod. Reassure that the gear is engaged and that it's spinning. Then we will have our middle-sized gear go right above it. Press down and make sure that engages. Now on top will go the biggest gear which you will have to press down. And to give you a side view, you can see how they will all engage and this is what your spacing should look like when you're done. Last but not least, it's the micro gear. This is the smallest one and it will go on last. To secure the gear, slowly press the lock rings using both thumb fingernails, evenly pressing down until it slides. This may take a couple of tries, so be patient and try not to lose the lock rings as they tend to pop out. Same thing with the second lock ring. Check the spacing and make sure they have the slightest amount of room. 
This is what your gears will look like. As for the micro gear, it won't go all the way in due to the spring loaded play, forcing us to remove its back plate to prevent the spring from deploying, allowing us to fully push the gear into place, eliminating the play. With the flathead micro screwdriver, loosen both screws. The bottom one will be tricky to get to due to the regulator on the board. Holding the shaft in place, press down on the tiny micro gear and set it in place. Make sure it's flush. Since the gears are in place, it's time to fasten the covers. We will start with the back spindle and tighten the two flatheads. Mind the regulator on the board, quarter turns to make sure you got it nice and tight. This is what your gear alignment should look like. If it looks correct, proceed with putting the cover along with the two flathead screws. Now, moving on to the front face of the cluster. I have some rusty bolts that were just driving me crazy, so let's go ahead and polish them up with a fiberglass brush, eliminating all the rust that's on there. This is what you should get. After painting it with the acrylic marker, they look brand new and reinstall them where they were. Next step, let's identify the rear contact pins that connect the odometer to the main board. Once identified, carefully place it and make sure the contact pins are secure. After that, you can clean the bolts if they're a little dirty or oxidized and reinstall them in cross pattern. Tightening by quarter and then eighth turns. Just about finished and let's give it a quick wipe down on the back of this cluster. It seems to get very dusty and dirty. So Kim wipes, Q-tips and some Windex will do just fine. Then finish off with some dust off and get all the little debris off. Let's carefully clam this shell together, making sure the base bottom contacts connect in their pin socket. Once secured, let's tighten the back Phillips screws we first took off. And there you have it, fixed odometer ready for the open road. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Nerdy30, this special of odometer motor meter instrument cluster repair. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. We'll catch you on the next one.